Hello and welcome back to Data Science Castnet. In today's video, I thought we'd look at a fun niche task, namely SVG generation, and trace the history of it by no means exhaustively, just a quick little survey skim over a sequence of papers that I think captures very nicely the general trend across a number of niche specific generative AI subfields. Um, and so we'll talk about the, the kind of flow of how we went from um, you know, different early approaches to trying to generate, how do we generate some sort of semi-consistent SVG, um, all the way up to like modern models that are able to spit out these, you know, amazing artistic masterpieces. Um, and so, yeah, let's start with like, okay, so back in the day, um, there's a few different ways you could do this. You could use uh, algorithmic methods that had no AI, right? Like uh, just sort of deterministic rules for turning an image into SVGs. Um, or you could try some sort of differentiable rendering pipeline where you leveraged like the, the prior of an existing pre-trained model. Um, so this was 2021, but even before that, the other, like the default example that everyone would pretty much look at, um, okay, this is 2023, but it builds on work from 2019, would be the more standard uh, machine learning, deep learning approach, namely find a data set of training data, represent that in a way that you can learn and then train a model on that data to generate more data like that, right? And so that could be, you know, like a GAN style networks for images perhaps, or very commonly a transformer model. And so Icon Shop, um, let's look at the paper here. Um, they take uh, Deep SVG 2020, they take SVG images and they simplify them into this very uh, sort of limited vocabulary. Um, and then they take a transformer model. So this transformer model takes some text and these are just like tags and then it takes the sequence of commands one by one. So this is just a sequence of tokens and they train an autoregressive transformer on this data set. Um, and they end up with something that can now take in another sequence of tags, right? You could say a clock with a um, triangle on top um, and hopefully theoretically output a sequence that kind of vaguely resembles something that you'd asked for, right? Um, and so here's some examples, 24 hour, card, password, play music. Um, if you check out the data set samples, you'll see this is um, like many other cases, right? If you train a face generator on a bunch of faces, a lot of them will look kind of like all the faces in the data set. It's very constrained. It's a nice simple data set. All of these are black icons drawn just with the simple commands that they use. Um, and so, yeah, that's like the very classic um, learning to generate by imitating an existing distribution, training from scratch on a nice big data set of um, sort of hand curated data. Uh, okay, so that's like the old school way that you'd do it, right? You'd find a data set of faces and you train a model from scratch to generate faces. Um, and then the next step in that path is to start leveraging existing sort of larger scale models, right? Either like the, the um, clip-based methods that were optimizing towards a clip prior or more commonly just using an existing model as a backbone. So we're gonna jump straight forward in time to um, Omni SVG, which takes a Quinn 2.5 VL model. So this is a model that's able to take in ready text and images. Um, and it extends this, so it modifies the model to have some extra um, vocabulary for specifically SVG tokenization. And again, it's going to train on sequences where you say, here's an image and some text or just image or just text. And then here's an SVG all tokenized into a, a sort of linear sequence. It's again, just a, a transformer model. Um, and it's going to step by step draw out the pictures. And so I highly recommend checking out their um, examples on their site, highly impressive that they can do this. Um, okay, so what are the what are the recipes? How do we go from black and white icons that kind of look like the data to this much more general, much more powerful kind of open vocabulary SVG generation? Um, and a few key pieces are, number one, like I said, using an existing backbone, right? Quinn 2.5 was trained on trillions of tokens of internet text and images um, by a very competent team. It's a, it's a large model relative to the previous example we showed. Um, so that's like step one is have this big pre-trained model that you can adapt. Um, and then step two is data. And so not only did they find pretty much every SVG icon on the internet, as far as I can see, they also found big data sets of SVG illustrations. And then they also synthetically generated a lot of extra data. Right, so this was actually like stacking several of the tricks that you'd see in other domains as well. Um, so here they used Flux, a state-of-the-art image model, um, then specifically stylized those images to look like SVGs and then used VTracer, which is an existing like image to SVG kind of more deterministic tool um, to end up with lots of synthetic training data. And this included things like using Flux to generate existing characters. Um, and so they have these pipelines where um, 
they could, uh, you know, prompt with a, a photo of someone's face and then ask for that in a specific style, right? They could get this kind of like natural language editing or adaption and so on. Um, okay, so we're not going to go too much into any of those pieces, um, but I thought it was fun. Yeah, it's building on the same sort of ideas as the previous one, right? Like simplifying the vocabulary and f formatting everything as a sequence, um, but training these much larger models, right, up to 7 billion parameters and, um, yeah, leveraging like existing um, backbones of LLMs. Uh, and so this pattern, um, I've seen a number of fields and it, ju it just feels like it's fun to like pull out the similarities, right? So like 3D, um, another like s similar path. You had early transformer models where they just tokenized a bunch of simple 3D shapes, manually curated large data sets of low polygon 3D shapes and tokenized them with like special vertices and edges and trained a transformer to generate those. Um, and then you had like, oh, now we have these like differentiable approaches where you take like Dream Fusion, you take an existing uh, image generation model, right, that's learned all these priors about the world and you adapt it with some clever like differentiable rendering to be able to generate 3D. And then you learn some sort of better, um, maybe multi-view conditioned, you know, image in 3D out full unified pipeline based on some pre-trained data. Um, yeah, so all like very, very cool steps and all learning some of the same lessons, right? The value of big existing pre-trained models to capture a lot more diverse world knowledge and then be able to adapt those to specific tasks. And then of course it's 2025, right? So we're not just talking about synthetic data. Um, that's so 2024. And we're not just talking about like treat everything like a language model. That's so like early 2020s. Um, now it's 2025, age of RL. And so the paper that sparked this kind of little retrospective was um, a new one from May 2025 that I really like rendering aware reinforcement learning for vector graphics generation. Um, and so this is kind of like the cherry on the cake to use Yen Likens metaphor. Um, we learn from vast internet scale pre-training. So this is going to look very similar to um, Omni SVG. Um, and then we do supervised fine tuning on the task that we want, i.e. Uh, SVG generation, not just general language generation. And then we do some reinforcement learning to really lock it in and enable some like new tier of um, achievement that you couldn't just get with fine tuning. It's just for various reasons. Um, okay, so existing VLM approaches often struggle to produce faithful and efficient SVGs because they never see the rendered images during training and differentiable rendering is tricky, um, but you can still compare the outputs to the original inputs and so you can get this evaluative feedback signal for RL, right? And so if you've done any looking at any of the RL approaches for math or code or any of those, this is not gonna be at all shocking. Um, but yeah, their approach is to take a, an existing pre-trained visual language model, right, that takes text and images. They're going to prompt it to generate an SVG, and then they're going to look at the rendered image, and you can't differentiate that step. That's what this little piece is saying. Um, but we can compare the rendered image to the target, right, whether that's by saying um, we have a, a ground truth image that we want to generate, um, or it's using some other sort of clever feedback. Um, and so you can see the supervised fine tuning, that, that's what the SFT here stands for, um, just on the training examples doesn't get you an amazing result. Um, but this reinforcement learning over time, taking these groups of generation attempts and assigning different rewards and, and updating the model to try and get better at that, um, very quickly the model is able to learn to do surprisingly well on these tasks. Um, and so, yeah, this feels like a very um, current example of how you would achieve this task, right? You'd have this history of like, oh, first we find a data set of exactly what we want and we try and train just on that. And then it's like, okay, we leverage existing backbones and then we adapt it using an even larger data set, possibly with some, you know, synthetically generated data. And now it's like, okay, then we say, is there an extra quality metric, right? Either human feedback or um, any sort of verifiable reward depending on the task, in this case, rendering the resulting image and then comparing that with a true image. Can we do that to like, control even more that it's doing exactly what we want. Um, so this is a really fun paper if you're interested in SVG generation. They have really nice um, components to what exactly that reward should be. Specifically, they, they have all sorts of fun with it. It's not just like raw pixel difference. They have um, semantic similarity and code efficiency to make sure that it does relatively short SVG sequences and so on. Um, okay, so that's that's like the one path that you could do. Now, there's a, an elephant in the room, which is that um, you can also uh, somewhere here I have the playground, yeah, you can also just ask a big model, right? So this is Gemini with that same input, please reconstruct this picture of an apple as an SVG, um, and the big model can also kind of do it. Now it's not great, <laughs> right? You could try this yourself, um, but it feels like, yep, that's maybe also a different direction is throw out all of the careful specific data, 
um, throw out all of the like special tokenizers and limited vocabularies and so on and just have a model that's seen so much of the internet including so many SVGs uh, that it's just able to somewhat natively take in um, images or text or both um, and if asked for a nice red apple with a stem and a, a green leaf with soft shadows just spit out the result um, but obviously unless you're able to train at you know the trillion parameter scale it's not really something that you can participate in um, so we're kind of stuck as the general researchers having fun with these more specific targeted core methods and then tinkering around with them and seeing if we can compete and that feels like the current state of things you can have these big models that can do a decent job right gpd 4 is like you know kind of replicating the inputs with svg but not perfectly um, or you can have this clever small model with all sorts of domain specific tricks and get in some cases a genuine improvement and at the very least a lightweight model that you can experiment with that you can try out tricks that you could never do on a closed source model um, so anyway that's my little mini recap of the state of svg generation um, yeah, I highly recommend checking through this paper if you're interested in like a, a case study and all of the tricks coming together. Um, you'll see the same thing for 3D, you'll see the same thing in different ways for like different types of audio generation or scene understanding or yeah, many, many cases where we're converging on this pattern of take uh, as broad a sort of general pre-train as possible, uh, leverage that existing information for something more specific where there's less data, uh, find a reward signal that you can do reinforcement learning and you're able to match or even exceed the big general purpose models. Um, and then of course maybe um, the next round of general purpose model training, someone at the, at the labs uses your approach to generate some synthetic data. So it's all <laughs> ties up in a cycle. Anyway, uh, very different style of video for me than normal, no code, um, other than I can I guess share my um, <laughs> my original clip SVG experiments but yeah I hope you found that interesting and um, thank you so much for watching go have some fun oh and if you want to see like people playing with um, LLMs for image generation and drawing definitely go check out this Kaggle competition there's some fun discussions all right thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one